So this is what Jeremy Renner's been doing instead of Marvel movies. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Kill the Messenger. Gary Webb, San Jose Mercury News. You believe in conspiracy theories, Gary? No, I don't believe in conspiracy theories. Conspiracies, yes. If I believe it, there's nothing theory about it. Was the government aware that you were smuggling tons of cocaine into the United States? Yes, the government knew. This leads to very sensitive national security matters. National security and crack cocaine, the same sentence. Does that not sound strange to you? Yes, Hawkeye has been noticeably absent from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. His cameo in the first Thor, and then as the team member with the least amount of screen time in the Avengers. That's it. And Renner himself wasn't too happy about it, which he made known to the press. Now, whether his following total absence from the MCU after that was Kevin Feige benching him as punishment or Renner proving he had other options, we'll never know. But apparently the feud is over, as Hawkeye's role in Avengers Age of Ultron has been reportedly bulked up, and there have been multiple hints that he'll be a major player in Captain America 3. But interestingly, while Renner is certainly prolific with or without Marvel, he has yet to make much of an impact beyond his original star-making turn in The Hurt Locker. Sure, he received another Oscar nomination the next year for The Town, but for American Hustle, he was the only marquee member of the cast not to receive an Oscar nomination. The Immigrant sank, he had little to do in Mission Impossible, and Universal is courting the return of Matt Damon as Jason Bourne, despite Renner prepping a second outing as Aaron Cross. He had one shining moment, though, with, believe it or not, Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters, which grossed over $220 million, three quarters of that from overseas. A sequel is still up in the air, perhaps delayed over Renner's new price bracket. After all, he shot Hansel and Gretel prior to making The Avengers. Meanwhile, Renner insists his low profile is of his own design, recently telling USA Today he's like a ninja. Quick, name one ninja. Exactly. Ninjas are a dime a dozen, but in Hollywood you need to make a name for yourself. And perhaps Renner will do that with Kill the Messenger, his very first producing gig. In the film, Renner portrays investigative journalist Gary Webb, whose real-life story reads like something that should be, well, a movie. The film is directed by prolific television director Michael Cuesta, who has plenty of experience with this sort of edgy fare, having previously worked on Six Feet Under, Dexter, and Homeland. Screenwriter Peter Landisman, adapting Webb's own novel and Nick Shue's novel about Webb, has a little more feature experience, having written and directed last year's Parkland. But he has also been drafted to direct and script Sony's upcoming film about the NFL concussion controversy, which Ridley Scott will produce. But despite a solid amount of talent and play here, these political movies are hit or miss with both audiences and critics. The Fifth Estate, Charlie Wilson's War, and The Green Zone all slipped through the cracks, while Captain Phillips and Zero Dark Thirty did not. George Clooney used to make a pretty good living, or at least maintain a pretty good profile with this kind of picture for a while, but he's moved on. Can Renner fill his shoes, or is he just keeping them warm, a la Bourne? You know what else a ninja does? It blends into the background, which is becoming a real problem for Jeremy Renner. I mean, he's very good in this movie. He does an excellent job portraying Gary Webb and the horrible situation that he goes through. But he doesn't pop. He doesn't make the character pop, and he doesn't pop as an actor. He doesn't really bring anything special to the role, like, say, Tom Hanks. Now, another problem with this movie is that it's one of a number of recent films which tell a story that needs to be told, but the way it's told in these films is not compelling enough from a narrative perspective or a visual perspective to make it worth seeing on the big screen. And recent examples of other films like this are Cesar Chavez and The Fifth Estate. Now, speaking of The Fifth Estate, it is absolutely fascinating to see that Julian Assange and Gary Webb have the exact same things happened to them. And both were warned that these dark, mysterious powers that be would come after them in this manner. And neither one believes it. So maybe if this movie keeps getting made and this, uh, this warning goes out there to future activists or current activists, they'll start understanding that this is not only a, a choice tactic from this, you know, mysterious group of powerful people, but it has a proven success rate. And maybe they might start be able, uh, be able to start uh, preparing for it, to counter it. Because it really is sad to see, uh, you know, I, you know, I know it's arguable with people like Julian Assange or Edward Snowden, uh, you know, if they're, if they're doing good, but I think you can't argue that Gary Webb 
wasn't doing good. I mean, very commendable uh, journalist. And speaking of journalism, uh, as you can see, there are a lot of really interesting points here. Journalism is also attacked pretty heavily in this movie. And it shows that journalism is a business and therefore corruptible and has just the same insider politics as any business. It's, you know, it doesn't have some higher calling. It doesn't operate at some higher level. It's another down and dirty field. And perhaps if Kill the Messenger went after journalism, you know, in a stronger manner, one for the jugular, this might be a more memorable film. But right now it's torn between going after journalism and trying to get Gary Webb's story out there. Uh, and I think ironically, uh, while Gary Webb's story didn't uh, connect with the public ultimately back when he reported it, it's still this movie isn't going to connect with the public and it's still not going to be recognized. And that only not that only speaks to journalism and the dark mysterious powers that be that can bury these kinds of stories, but you'll see that it also speaks to the public's attention and you know what we what stays on our radar and you know what we you know the they say that there's a power in reporting but in saying things out loud and speaking the truth but not if no one listens to you, right? So again, very interesting movie. A lot of great things at play here, and I do suggest you see it at some point, but I cannot recommend that you pay a movie theater price to see it uh, because of it, you know, the flaws narratively, visually, and also Renner's performance. Everything is good, um, but even as an HBO movie, I think this wouldn't be one of those really memorable films, which is unfortunate because, again, a story you need to see. I'd also recommend you see Cesar Chavez, but Fifth Estate just had too many problems from a narrative perspective, I think, to make it worth your time. So that's my review of Kill the Messenger. If you've seen the film, please leave your own thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some more episodes right now.